Hi everybody and welcome back to Forget Me Not The Missing Podcast. I hope you're all well. I was doing well until recording this introduction and this is now I think the 21st take. It's stressing me out. So whatever you get this time is what you're having. <laughs> I hope it sounds fine. But what I've been trying to say and failing is that I hope you're all well. That's all I wanted to say. I hope everyone's okay. I hope you're coping during this lockdown. For some reason this lockdown is the hardest one yet. But there's light at the end of the tunnel, the vaccines are coming, they're being rolled out slowly, but they are getting rolled out. So we will get there soon. And before we kick off into this case, I want to say, I know I said I'd have a microphone this week. And I'm not lying, I do have a microphone, it's right next to me. But my laptop is about 700 years old and doesn't want to work with a new microphone. But I really wanted to make sure I got this episode out. So we're parking the microphone this week. Hopefully by next week, my IT brother will have sorted all this for me. So the sound quality will be better. But anyways, let's jump into it. So the case I'm going to discuss today has been called by the New Zealand Herald as the most shameful missing persons case in history which breaks my heart. That's, it's so sad. We're talking about a two-year-old girl and it was just a tragic series of failures and doing the wrong thing and the investigation just wasn't good enough and it's so sad. So please keep on listening to find out more about Catrice Lee. Now, Catrice Lee was born on the 20th of November, 1979. Her father was Richard Lee, who was an army sergeant from the King's Royal Hussars. And at the time, the regiment was stationed in Paderborn in Germany. And this is where Catrice was born. The area that they were stationed was called Schloss Niehaus. Now, this is actually one of the reasons I picked this case is because I was also stationed in the same place when I was serving in the British Army. Therefore, I know the area well and I just felt I could maybe add a bit of a different perspective to this case. It is one that really strikes at my heartstrings because the fact that this happened there somewhere I felt like was home is just it's heartbreaking it's so sad but unfortunately on her second birthday the 20th of November 1991 Catrice disappeared and there's one more thing I want to say before I jump into the details of this case it's eerily similar to Madeleine McCann I don't know if it's just me that thinks this but two young girls both British both disappeared in Europe and both had something with their eyes. But Maddie obviously had her distinctive eye colour and Catrice actually had an eye condition that would have meant she needed two operations to fix it. So if she's still alive now, she would have had to have this operation to fix her eyes. So both of them can be identified through their eyes, which I don't know why, it gives me the heebie-jeebies. So let's jump into the circumstances of the disappearance. So the family were at the local NAFI when Catrice went missing. So for those of you who don't know, the NAFI is an organisation that supports the British military and they have shops and things like that all over the world where the UK is stationed. So the one in Germany is it's different now to what it was when Catrice went missing. But when I was stationed there, you could go there to grab a Costa, pop to the post office, get your nails done, buy a car. And then they had like the little supermarket that sold British food goods so people used to hang out there quite often it was quite a common place where you'd see families with their kids or you know people doing their food shop and things like that so the nappies moved now but at the time that Catrice went missing it was in a building near camp and you wouldn't just stumble on it you'd have to purposely go there and near the nappy at the time there was a river and that does form one of the major theories surrounding Catrice's disappearance but we'll discuss that a bit more later so first let's discuss how she went missing so whilst at the NAFI, the family were at the checkout and Catrice's mother realised she forgot to pick up some crisps and she asked her sister to watch Catrice. So according to Wendy, Catrice's aunt, Catrice ran after her mother when she went to the crisps aisle and Wendy didn't think to go after the child. She assumed, you know, she'd just gone to follow her mother and that they were together. And also here, I'd like to add that because the NAFI is where all the serving British personnel go to shop or grab a coffee or whatever, and the families all live on the same estates and they all seem to know each other, they work together. It's a little community and you really do feel safe. So I don't blame Wendy for not running after the child because you just wouldn't expect anything bad to happen. You just think, oh, it's just all, you know, my friends, my neighbours, my work colleagues. You don't, you don't think the worst. When Catrice's mother then came back to the checkout with her crisps, but without Catrice, she realised her daughter was missing. So assuming she was lost in the store, the family quickly raised the alarm, did a search of the store with the staff there and with the people who wanted to help out, but 
they didn't find anything. Right here as well, I just wanted to add that from my experience, not many German people actually went to the NAFI. It was set up for British serving personnel. They sold British food. You know, in my opinion, it would be a bit strange for somebody who's German to go there to steal Catrice because it just... I never saw a German person in those shops when I was there, just put it that way. It was literally set up for the army. So that's just something to think about. Obviously, we can't exclude the idea that this happened because people are predators and maybe they know that young kids go to this area. I don't know. But it's just something I wanted to put out there. And I also think that the reason that this case was not treated as an abduction but an accident from the start was because of this sense of community and things don't bad don't happen here, we we'll all work together, live together. I think maybe that's why it wasn't taken as seriously as it should have been at the start. So following Patrice being reported missing, the German police and the Royal Military Police conducted an extensive search of the area with the help of soldiers and volunteers. The military police were in charge of the investigation, however they did have to negotiate with the German police due to the Navy being British owned but in the German town, it wasn't on the camp. The investigation turned up no leads and they did actually dredge the river and they did conduct house to house inquiries but nothing was found. But off the bat, both the military and the German police believed that Catrice had wandered into the nearby river and drowned. No body was ever recovered and the family insists this is not what happened as they said that Catrice was water shy and wouldn't have wandered to the river. From the start, this investigation it wasn't the best. The German police refused to go to the press and it was six weeks before an item appeared in the local newspaper, which is so unfortunate because if there was more awareness raised at the time, perhaps Catrice would not still be missing. And also, Sharon Catrice's mum raised concerns a few years later about how the investigation was a, quote, complete and utter sham. She said that it took six weeks for the checkout staff to be interviewed. And actually, in one case, it took 20 years for somebody who was working at the checkout at the time Catrice went missing to be interviewed. It took 48 hours for the border control points to be informed that there was a missing child. And it took 24 hours for sniffer dogs to be brought in to find any trace of Catrice, which by then the scent would have been contaminated from so many people being there searching. Now, I don't know when the case was officially closed, but in 2000, the case was reopened. And this was because computer technology helped form an image of what Catrice may look like now. Following the reopening of the case, people did start coming forward. A man came forward. He said he'd never been interviewed, but he had actually been standing behind the Lee family in the checkout queue. And this is also when the checkout lady came forward saying that she hadn't been interviewed. It's absolutely wild to me that these witnesses weren't interviewed at the time. Like, surely that's vital. Interview everyone who's at the shop because somebody might have seen her wander off or seen somebody with her. Blows my mind. But here we are. There was also another lead, which to me I would have been a bit more proactive about. But a lady came forward and stated that a serving soldier who was at the time in the same regiment as Catrice's father, he'd confessed to murdering a child. The police did interview him, he denied it, which obviously, even if he was guilty, he would. He's not going to say, yeah, I murdered a child. The woman who gave details about this guy actually died soon after he was interviewed, and this lead kind of died with her. Nothing came from it afterwards. The military police told Catrice's family that this guy was probably just a fantasist. And now, I personally would like to know what evidence they have of this, because to me, it's not normal to just joke about killing a child, especially at the time when a child has just gone missing. I mean, yes, some people are weird and fantasise about these things, but it just seems a bit of an odd thing to say. Following the reopening of the case, three new possible sightings came after her story appeared on Missing Live, which was a BBC show. This show showed a digital rendering of what Catrice may look like now as an adult. Natasha, Catrice's sister, also appeared on the BBC show Crime Watch, appealing for information as the family had received a phone call, well, an answer phone message, from a woman saying to look for your daughter in France. Police did investigate this recording, but nothing more ended up coming of it. It is unclear whether it was legitimate or a hoax. However, people can be pretty sick and do things like hoaxes while families are looking for missing loved ones for some bizarre reason. And this isn't the first time this family will experience a hoax regarding this case, as you'll find out later. In 2012, the Royal Military Police admitted that mistakes had been made during the first investigation. No way. They opened the case again. After reanalyzing the initial findings, the river became a focal point once again. In February 2017, the military police released a photo fit of a man that they wanted to speak to in relation to the case. After a witness came forward and said they had seen a man carrying a small child into a green saloon. Now, 
to me, this came about after reanalyzing the initial findings. So they knew this whole time a young girl had been seen with a man, but nothing was done about it. Crazy. Notice as well here how they've been so confident about the river this whole time, but now actually there was a man seen with the young girl who matched the description. And to me, it's almost like they were so focused that it was the river, the river, the river. To me, it seems like they were so focused on proving that she was in the river that they kind of ended up discounting important leads because it didn't match what they think would happen. And that is the wrong way to go about any investigation. So in 2018, the police go back to the river. I guess you can't exclude it as a possibility, but in my personal opinion, I just don't believe a two-year-old managed to run out of the Nafi to the river jump into the river, drown, all whilst people are searching for her. And also, like I said before, they dredged the river at the time. They didn't find a body. Regardless, in April 2018, a team of military personnel and civilian forensic experts announced they planned to excavate a stretch of the riverbank as it was significant and of interest. Which leads us back to the man in the green car. He was apparently seen driving over a bridge that went over the river the day after Catrice's disappearance. So to me, I wonder whether they think he may be was there because he disposed of the body there but that's just me taking a stab in the dark trying to figure out what their line of thinking was so they did actually excavate the riverbank they started in may and it was supposed to take five weeks they finished it in a couple of weeks make of that what you will there was some hope when bone fragments were uncovered however forensic tests confirmed that these were not human they were actually horse bones and then get this the family found out this not from the police but from a statement posted on social media the case was closed once again on the 29th of May 2018 after finding no new evidence. In a statement, the Royal Military Police said, Royal Military Police are therefore satisfied that the excavation uncovered no evidence which would shed light on Catrice's disappearance and have now ruled this area out of their investigation. Speaking after this, Catrice's father stated that the lack of any new findings at the river only confirmed that she was likely abducted. In the interview, you can tell how annoyed he is at this investigation, and I really don't blame him. In his words, what theories do they have left? I can understand what he's saying. They seem to be looking at everything except the obvious. She was abducted. In a statement, Richard also said, I believe that what we should be looking at now is a public inquiry into the treatment of the family through all of this and the way in which the case has been handled. If things had been done properly in 1981, we wouldn't still be going through this now. And I would have to agree with him. My heart honestly just breaks for this family. So you may think that everything ended there and that concluded the investigation. Nope. Seemingly out of the blue, in September 2019, a man was arrested in Swindon in connection to the disappearance of Catrice. The Royal Military Police were very coy in coming forward with this to the press. They didn't, didn't want it leaked. Uh, but the man in question was a former soldier. And then two days later, he was released without charge. Another dead end. Richard said, this arrest brings it all back and makes it feel raw. As with parents in all cases of missing children, we want a happy ending, but that might not be the case and we just hope we will get answers. He also stated that when he found out about the arrest, alarm bells rang. As like I said earlier about the guy in the green saloon, I mean, I don't know if these two are linked. Maybe the guy they questioned was the man in the green saloon, I don't know. But he said alarm bells rang because the man who called him to inform him of the new development said that the review team had pointed this individual out, which suggested to him that the information was there the whole time and hadn't been acted upon which was the same, he said, as the information that led them to the riverbank. It had all been on file for 37 years. How ridiculous is that? What are they doing? Why are they sitting on this information? Why is there not more desire to find this poor girl? Dead or alive, it doesn't matter. The family deserves answers and she deserves justice. So earlier I touched on the hoax about or the potential hoax about oh look for her in France now there was another disgusting hoax I don't know if that previous one was a hoax but this one was definitely a hoax and it was vile so what actually happened a 40 year old called Heidi Robinson set up a Facebook profile under the name of Catrice she sent a friend's request in August 2018 to Natasha Catrice's sister and despite pleads from the family to remove the profile Heidi continued to pretend to be the grown toddler. Eventually a DNA test was conducted and Heidi was in fact proved to be a fraud. But that didn't stop Heidi as she claimed she was Catrice and it was a cover-up. 
Heidi was given 18 weeks of spent prison sentence and required to undergo mental health treatment for 12 months as well as rehabilitation for 40 days. Shocking. So do you think we're done there with the investigation? Nope, it opens again, <laughs> which I'm happy about. I'm happy they've not given up on this case and I'm happy they're still trying to find answers for the family. But on the 11th of December 2020, the Royal Military Police announced that Operation Butte, which is the operation into Catrice's disappearance, would be once again reopened. They've since reopened the Facebook page, which lists a lot of details about Catrice and the ongoing operation. Therefore, I'd encourage you to check this out if you're interested in it. For the last part of the episode, I really wanted to delve into the theories surrounding Catrice's disappearance, as there have been many. I'm going to go into three of the key ones. So firstly, as I touched upon, there was the river, and police were sure at the time that she had drowned in the river. However, this is generally now being ruled out, as despite the searches, nothing's been uncovered. In 2013, Catrice's dad, Richard, said that the water theory has now been ruled as less likely, which is what my family have believed from day one. They've had water experts out there who took into account the day that Catrice went missing, the weather conditions, the speed of the river, the depth of the river, and their opinion, as is my family's opinion, she never fell into the river and drowned. I would agree with this one. As I said earlier, I, I don't believe a two-year-old managed to leave the NAFI go to the river, jump in the river, because there were so many people looking for her straight away. Like, her mum would have been running around looking for her, and I just don't believe, I just don't believe that that happened. I really don't think it did. And I just, the timeline doesn't add up. So the second theory is that Catrice was abducted by a childless family and is still alive, or alternatively that she was stolen and sold for profit, perhaps to a childless family, and that she's still alive but does not know who she is. The family have mentioned this theory quite a few times. I think this is what they, they want to happen. Obviously, they want to believe that she's alive and she's safe, which is understandable, and I really hope she's alive and safe as well. So I did mention earlier that Catrice had an eye condition and she would have had to have surgery. So an appeal was put out to medical professionals in Germany to see if they had conducted this type of surgery on anybody. Nothing ended up coming of it. But on Operation Butte's Facebook page, they do have a post calling for anyone who knows that they had this operation to come forward, as they may be Catrice. So we can only pray that this theory is true, that Catrice is alive, living a happy life, and completely unaware of what has happened around her. Thirdly, Catrice succumbed to a paedophile. So Chris Clark has worked on dozens of child abduction cases, and he said the two theories about the child abduction and the river don't make sense. He's added that... Quote, this was a child abduction by a paedophile and the manner in which she disappeared is exactly the way Robert Black had been able to make children vanish. So who was Robert Black? Well, Robert Black was a convicted child killer. He died in January 2016 of a heart attack. However, he was actually in Paderborn at the time of Catrice's disappearance. Chris Clark states, Catrice disappeared just a few weeks before Christmas when Black would have been travelling to Germany to put posters out for alcohol and cigarette firms. He'd have been visiting British Army camps along the Rhine, including Paderborn. He says, I'm quite convinced Black quietly befriended Catrice Lee, took her to his van outside the NAFI and took her away. With Black being dead, you may think we will never be able to answer this theory. However, Chris Clark and criminologist Robert Giles have been searching Black's crimes for the last four years for a book that they're co-authoring. They believe evidence such as petrol and credit card receipts will appear in a police file into Black's background, which will reveal he was in Paderborn when Catrice disappeared. A petrol receipt was actually the crucial bit of evidence that nailed Black for murdering nine-year-old Jennifer Cardi 16 years after she was abducted. So perhaps the same can be done for Catrice. This theory makes my stomach churn and just puts my stomach in knots as I really believe this is probably most likely, especially if you have a known child killer who was likely at the same area at the time she went missing, probably even in the same store, putting up his posters. It's so sad. Catrice's dad, Richard, said about this theory, we realise there could be a dark side to the story, and if that is proven and we have a body, then at least we can have closure and move on. All I hope is that this family do have the closure they need. At the time of her disappearance, Catrice had light curly brown hair, brown eyes, and a pink birthmark slightly to the right of the base of his spine, which looked like a rash. She also had the condition in her left eye. At the time of her disappearance, she was wearing red Wellington boots, a turquoise tuffle coat, a green and blue tartan pinafore dress with frills around the shoulders, and a blouse underneath, which was white, and white tights. 
She also didn't speak any German. She only spoke English, despite living in Germany. If you have any information on the disappearance of Catrice Lee, you're encouraged to contact Operation Butte on 0800 616 888 or email sibrmp-rhq-mit-mailbox at mod.gov.uk. For more information on how to contact Operation Butte, please go to their Facebook page, Operation Butte. Thank you for listening to this episode. I know it was a really heavy one, but I think it was a really important one to do, especially since the case was reopened last month. So I'd really appreciate it if you could follow Operation Butte. If you know any information, let them know. Please share this podcast so that we can get the message out about Catrice Lee so we can give the family some peace of mind of what happened to her, maybe find her alive, or if not, at least bring her some justice.